And we're back. Now, the last time, we had gotten the opportunity to become a Prefect. As you see, that is now my title, there at the top bar underneath the date. And now I have the freedom to make a bit more stuff happen. Including some interesting powers that I could technically do. But I'm not going to do those right now. In fact, the first thing I want to do real quick is... Okay, good. Good health. So, the thing that I'm hurting for the most is land. Regrettably, as Prefect, my power only extends to these two little things. You see where that map is flashing? I don't know why I'm pointing at my screen right now. Where it's flashing and the space directly north of it are the only areas I have any jurisdiction in. Suffice to say, not amazing. So, what we're going to do is continue our campaign of terror, I mean liberation, by heading straight to the north. This will encircle one of our most dreaded and annoying enemies, which is the Kingdom of Wu. In actual history, they would eventually own pretty much the area east of that spot, there in the southeastern part of the country. Uh, not invite. I literally can only invade one direction because, you know, I am part of the Empire on my east and west sides. <clears throat> you know, part of, not at all, in any way, against. Because that would be patently absurd. Thankfully, we have some more help, so I can pick more officers that I made, and fewer randos. So, this one is, yeah, slightly in our favor. Enemy health is dictated by the approximate comparison of units, because it's not really one for one. There's not actually, what would it be, about 50,000 units. It's really a lot less than that, with a single unit representing what would otherwise be many, many, many units. Having said that, we're going to begin the battle in my favorite fashion, which is me getting my horse and dealing with any immediately advancing aces. Chiefly, this guy. Oh, two guys. I didn't even see Han Song at first. I'm going to take care of the guy I have the advantage against first. Excellent. Whoa. Threw myself up the platform. Oh, he has to change weapons too. Oh, disregard. Okay, now they are attempting to make a run on our base here, but this is going to kind of serve as a choke point on this map. Stuff happens. Okay. Now we're taking care of one issue. Do I have two brushes? No, I don't. I only have one. And we got another one coming, so we want to be quick about this. Defeating their aces greatly drops their overall strength of their army. You see that bar, the red and blue bar above the map over there? That shows you a relative comparison of army strengths. Ah, that finally kicked in. When you empty that bar, you get a series of combo attacks that Basically, this can just sweep the floor with them. It only ever cues if you specifically have the weapon advantage. Whoops, I was letting in a free hit in because I was being careless, but that's fine. Uh, where's your friend? Where did he go? Did I beat him without seeing him? That is possible. At any rate, next guy is coming down. So, once I've cleared out the first rush on the aces, I usually make it a point to tell my guys to advance. This strategy usually makes it so they can't try anything shady, especially on maps with very obvious choke points, like this one here. In fact, it's a map that we'll encounter later in the game. I forget exactly where it is, but it has a basic like intersection in the center of the map that no matter which side of the field you're playing, you can use as a choke point. Oh, we got a sneaky devil down there. So, you know what, let's see if I can't, uh... It cows them to come to me. 
they ignore me and start going towards my other bases, I may need to renegotiate the strategy, but uh, we'll see. I don't think he's coming for me, but that's definitely what I was hoping for. Usually if you try to start aggravating their bases, they'll direct the path to you. Oh, it's you again. Hey, buddy. I'll let you in on a little in in interesting knowledge. On account that you're not going to be alive long enough. Uh, I totally plan on betraying the Emperor that I'm serving under and taking his power, one way or another. And I don't care how I pull it off, because it's going to happen. But you'll be dead. So, I'm not worried about you telling anyone. Seraph is a little bit of a pessimist, apparently, because she thought we were in any danger of losing. Controlling the field from the start of the battle is kind of important. It's easy to get overwhelmed because there's just going to be a lot happening if you let them get the upper hand. I'm going to go ahead and tell them to advance. And you're going, Snick, there's a guy done. Yeah, I know. At this point, I decided that he's either going to come out of his own volition, or some of my AI allies will deal with him on their own good time. If they don't, oh no, I lose a singular base, I'll get over myself. Now, one of the cool things about the weapon flurry is when you break all those triangles over someone's head, uh, anyone who gets caught in them basically gets destroyed, even if they were the sword who has weapon advantage over here. It's actually a very nice touch. Whoops. Aces count for several hundred units in terms of base units. Wow, really no one's going down to deal with that guy. Mm. Yeah, they're all going the same direction. Some Dynasty Warriors games give you the option of issuing orders, but... Eh, I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. Honestly, I've seen guys just get defeated by, by regular troops. Because they try to bite off more than they can rightfully chew. Not the weirdest thing that's ever happened. And they don't even get a special notice, it just tells you that they've been defeated. Like, instead of saying, Snek has defeated, you know, whoever, it's just like, they have been defeated. And that's all it is saying. As you see, there are several, like, weird paths on the map, and it kind of looks like they go nowhere. That's because they don't. They, they, they go nowhere. What will happen is they serve as exit points. If enemies are forced to flee, or if your allies are forced to flee and they have literally nowhere else to go, they will run for the edge of the map, and they will exit the map via one of those exits. Oops, got out of my reach. Yeah, they pretty much got it on the block, I'm not worried. I was thinking about going back and being a comprehensive sweep, but like, what's the point? before I go fight the next guy. I'm going to go to rage mode. Well, Liu Biao, I believe he is the commander. Ah, he didn't even get to finish his monologue. Well, that's that. This land is now mine. Excellently done, team. Capture a specific base. Yeah, I'm sure it was one of those ones I decided to deliberately neglect. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You are dead. 
Now, if you're wondering why I'm being so harsh, certain actions do get you certain stat-ups. Executing a whole bunch of people actually raises your base attack. So, yeah, there are actually some upsides. Also, it's not a virtue decision. You do not actually lose or gain virtue for executing people. It's just considered something that you would do. Hey, Graham. Ling <laughs> Ling's like, oh, what do you think about this girl? And I'm like, eh, I'm busy, okay? I'm I'm a snack with a lot on my plate, and going up against Wu is not my favorite thing to do in this game. But say, for instance, we wanted to take a minute. Let, let's let's uh, throw the hand break on for just a second, and we can interact with people. Like you can see that we we have some favor. Some of these people like us. This guy doesn't think much of us. E is the lowest it can be. D is like an acquaintance, basically, and. Obviously, the highest it can go is A rank. Mitaku, as my sworn brother, is an A rank. Clockwork is a jerk, so he's still an E. And some of the girls that Mitaku will try to set me up with are a little bit higher. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, talk to Shuro. Let's say about the one you got him to drink tonight. So our friendship has gone up. So, fun time. There's more to do than just, you know, driving your enemies before you. This is for you. I hope it will help you out. Oh, she's giving me some kind of item. Oh, that's not too shabby. Not amazing, but not shabby. Someone's starting an invasion, but it's a not-my-problem kind of situation. I do not want my boss to get any ideas and try to take that land before I can. So, the thing that makes me... Oh, my troops are pretty tired, actually. Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold your beak, Sophie. like to get some new weapons. What I'm going to do is conduct trade. Thank you for your assistance. Conducting in trade is a win-win for all involved. Hey, I'm not getting involved in your shenanigans. Nah, you got it, sir. The military games are about to relax. They can win, but there is some randomness involved if you're not there to see it through to the very bloody end. Excellent. Unfortunately, now I don't have money to actually buy the new weapons I want. I'm here with an offer, what do you think of these terms? Ah, they're not making deals over there. That could potentially become a problem. But as I have a little bit of time... Uh, oh, we actually have some people here who I have not made. Orochi there is not a character I created. If you're in online mode, or for some reason you're one of those weirdos who has a PS4 and you pay for internet connection for your console, which is dumb, because that's what an ISP does, uh, you can have other people's characters join your game. So, let's see... I will... Ah, recruiting people cost money too. It's never great. Okay, I mean, to take a little bit of time. Um, I, right, I can't actually quest anymore. I'm not a free unit. Um, let me think. So much I want to do, so much I have to do first. Actually, how are my peeps all feeling? 
other one is still tired. Yeah, we made the. Ah, uh, uh, running for the kingdom's resources was uh, not my best plan. You know what? Executive decision. The hit we take to stats is not that big of one. Plus, I can use some of these guys who are well rested to help supplement our numbers. Okay, so it's mostly Ditaku. I've had him in a lot of fights recently. Excellent. This one, I admit, I'm nervous. There's a lot that can go wrong on this map because it's really, like, despite how it looks, there's only three main paths. There's no way to bottleneck it, and the guys of the Wu Kingdom are just stupidly strong. And if they get you all at the same time, you're going to lose. We had some run-ins with these guys earlier, which is why we actually have one or two of their guys in our army, which is great. What is not great is I was hoping to have better weapons before I did this fight, but I kind of lost my patience, so I'm hoping that my defensive strategy will once again see us through. As you see, this brush is doing embarrassingly little damage. It's not it's more of a harassment weapon than an outright damage kind of weapon. You're thinking, we'll throw him in the water. It's like, yeah, you know, I wish, but I'm not, not sure. Yep, we already got some guys going for the throw. But we cannot let them. Like I said, the guys of Wu have been some of the most obnoxiously powerful enemies that will face in the entire campaign. There are few people I fear and respect like that. The Soon family is no laughing matter. My horse, on the other hand, kind of is. Oop, weapon clash. Sorry, your spear is no match against my very silly-looking paintbrush. It's a calligraphy brush, I know. Let me have my dumb joke here. Alright. It's already respawned. That's not great. Okay. Now I gotta get moving, so I'm already in danger of losing control of the situation. I was afraid that would happen. Huang guy is a big guy. He is dangerous. Of course, my spear has weakness to it. I kind of feel it's going to become a running gag here in a minute. The upside to the brush is it is a harassment weapon. It's good at keeping extra guys off me. But I've seen that boat weapon before, the one that long guy is wielding. It's actually very dangerous, and it's faster than it looks. Not want to be on the wrong side of that thing, is what I'm saying. Oh man, that was too close. Uh, the Muso, you know, there's a reason the Muso is the titular thing in Japan. Dynasty Warriors is the localized name in Japan, and it's known as the Muso series. Named for the special attacks. There's a reason that they're named as such, because those can just completely turn a fight on its head. Now you head south, because not only is there someone attacking us, he set up an archery turret. We need to kind of thin their aces out a bit before I send my guys forward, or we're just going to get divided and conquer. Help. Okay, if I get rid of that archery turret, much better control of the field. Then I can just kind of head forward from here and get back on the track. That looks so silly when I do it like that. 
I, mean, I don't know if that's supposed to be what happens, but it's what happens. Bug or by design, you decide. Okay, we got some aces coming this direction. So I just got to soon change. Thankfully, you can knock them out of those weapon transitions and turn the fight around in your favor. Oh, I thought that guy was coming here. Well, your funeral. Or maybe mine, because I'm about to get pincer between two guys. Let's see what happens. I hate you, horse. Alright, I'm gonna start moving forward. I should get my back away from me. These guys are no-namers. These are not the guys I'm worried about. We're gonna deal with these guys just fine. Yeah, the disgrace is the fact that I beat you with a calligraphy brush. My spear is markedly stronger, just for sure obvious reasons. Oh, good, not me. He is a guy worth fearing. He's actually very strong. This Musa is a nightmare if it hits him. Good. Exactly what I was worried about happening is happening. Just gonna grab him. At this point, there's no reason not to. Okay. Oh, good. You again. Camera, please. Got a bunch of my aces are here helping. It's a good strategy when dealing with someone like Wong Dai. Who wants to prove himself? Excellent. Okay. So we've been in control for the most part. We don't want to get cocky, but we are able to start pressing the advantage again. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, I'll break the spot here instead. Sarah pales from the short story loosely based on Monster Rancher. He is the friend and eventual love interest of my character host. Oh, unlike a lot of the characters in this, I've actually been mentioned on the channel before. Okay, the guys are coming in from the north and from the south, so I can spearhead here in the center. Alright, this is less than my idea. I'm quick about this and press my advantage using my area sweeps. Oh, friends are here. Never hurts to have a little backup. Excellent. The enemy's gonna chase after you? I didn't think they were, but okay. Whoops, I'm on the wrong way. I'm gonna go to the south and wipe those guys out. I don't want to leave anything to chance. I don't know if I made this clear or not, but I worry about this fight. 
I wasn't even gonna do this for a while, but like the way we ended up building our forces and our area for the map, it was kind of inevitable. I would either have to make allies with them or deal with them. Honestly, yeah, I'd rather not give them the chance to just sit there and accrue resources. That's the thing. Everything's going to get harder as we go along. The more area you control, the more people are going to start targeting you. Really, the more attention you draw to yourself, the bigger a target you're drawing on your back. Okay. Fantastic. Now we can go down and wipe out those last few lieutenants hanging out. Wow, I just needed a lot of guys. And I can cut to the north. Maybe I don't need to. Maybe my guys are just going to take care of it for me. Oh no, not Zerong. It's Dave. Okay. Really, guys like Sun Jian, Sun Se, uh, Huang Dong. You don't want to mess with those guys. If they come at you all at the same time, you're better to fall back and try to get help. It's actually one of the things, like, this game is great, even single player. It's even better if you get to play it in co-op, though. Kog and Itaku and I at different times have played the crap out of Dynasty Warriors games. So, getting to do this one has been a ton of fun, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I'm gonna go and cut across and go help those guys. That one ace is really being a problem. Excuse me, coming through. If you hit too many guys with your horse, you'll kind of rear up like that and lose some momentum, but it's really not that bad. My real concern is I don't want to start losing lieutenants now. Like, what would be the gain in that? We want to stay in control of the entire field the entire time until we can pin them down to their headquarters. Not ah, Sun Quan himself. That's why he was causing us so many trouble. I don't know what mobile unit captains do, but they are stronger than average moves and have slightly more aggressive AI. Better to take care of them when you see them. Having done that, once we take that last defensive base there in the northeast, we should be able to just pin them at their base. At that point, the battle should be ours. I don't think they have any last minute hand that's to pull on us now. So, uh, this battle actually was a pretty historic victory against the forces of South South. They actually linked all the ships together and then set them on fire while they were fighting on them. It is considered one of the most brilliant and unexpected tactical maneuvers done in the entire duration of the war. It didn't get moved to victory, but it did indeed leave a big impact on the tide of the war. Whoops. I was trying to deal with the other guy, and then I ended up... Uh, where'd he go? I guess we beat him. If it makes you feel any better, Sunjian, I had to go all out against you of all people. There's only one or two other lords on this map that worry me that, as much as you do. Good job, team. Oh, it's a three match or last night. Bleh. Nice! That might actually do me some real good. Hmm. Yeah, why don't you join us? Yeah, you guys... You, you guys can come with me. You can't beat them, join them. Wow, you guys are just... Usually they put up way more of a fight. They're like, no, I'm not serving you. But this time, they're just like, yeah, dude, let's throw it with you. You know what's up. You guys can all just go away. There. Now we have some reinforcements to my numbers. And they're people that I genuinely fear. 
There are certain characters I genuinely shy away from actually killing. If they're a named character with a unique model, I usually will either recruit them or let them go. Yeah. Wow, you really want me to hook up with Graham, huh? Having said that... Wow, you have the four-star weapons now. That'll be a big improvement over the two stars I'm using. But they're expensive, so I may have to hold off a little bit longer. Upside is... We're sitting well in most respects. Biggest empires at this point are that pink one that we just had our alliance end with, the purple one two spaces above them, and the green one in the east. The forest green, not the olive green. Having said that... Yeah, let's do some trading. Get our council and see what he has to say for himself. Okay. I'm not gonna help you with that, but okay. You think you can pull it off? I'd like to see you do it. Well, it should all be within the realm of reasonable. Speaking of, let's see if we. Weapons first. I admit, it's a little bit of a personal bias, but... On the other hand, getting a weapon that's three times as powerful as what I'm currently wielding, it's gonna go a long way. Yeah, from 5 to 29! Yes, yes, I'm aware. Maybe those make you go faster. I lose a little bit of direct attack power, but it might be worth it just for the speed bonus. That's fine. I'm pretty tired, so I should take a few turns to not engage in battle. So... Oh yeah, by the way, if you ultimately end up becoming BFFs with the ruler, you can't betray him anymore. <laughs> I don't know why I felt the need to bring that up, but, you know... Little details. Little details that mean a lot. You know, to some people. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. You guys have fun figuring that out. Military games were lacking. You just cannot win a fight without me. I don't think you realize just how hosed you are. Now, you see how certain areas on the map have circles, and certain ones have squares? Squares have a ruler, or at the very least a prefect, over them. If you take a square that's attached to circles, you will usually take those plots of land with them. However, at this point, the map has developed such that most every place has its own ruler, or everyone has started to elect prefects. So, annoying, but not the end of the world. Definitely within the realm of reasonable. Now, here's the thing. I don't like fighting battles on multiple fronts. So, what I'm gonna do... Hey, where is it? Can I not make a negotiation? I don't think I can. That's interesting. I've never noticed that before. As a prefect, I can't negotiate peace treaties. Fascinating. Okay. 
Okay. No, that's fine. Just, again, I find that fascinating. Happy to be working under you, which would make an excellent contribution. Satsuki actually comes from my first ever playthrough of the first Seventh Dragon. She was our group samurai. And one of our primary damage dealers. She was invaluable to us. We had some entertainment lined up. Dang, Yutaku, you are. <laughs> oh, someone decided to take action against me. Fine. 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 I've taken a few months off. So I will defend my province. Looks like everyone's pretty well rested. Hey, wait, where are the guys I just recruited? Did you literally take them from me? Oh. I'm going to enjoy betraying you. I literally recruited the better part of Wu, and you take them from me. Oh, I will enjoy putting your head to the guillotine, you magnanimous, wonderful ruler that I have to obey. <laughs> oh, that infuriates me. I didn't know you could do that. I thought they would automatically fall under my purview. Which is, you know, a lot more logical when you stop and think about it, right? You know what? I'm gonna push on the aggressive here. Hey, does this spear look like it needs to be sharpened to you? I guess evidently not. And all the action's happening in the north. They put me as far away from it as they could. Guess my guys wanted a bit more of the action. Yeah, fun fact, when you're on your horse, your jump button changes. The regular jump button, which in this case is A, since I'm on an Xbox controller, is usually only jump for when you're on foot. You hit it while you're on the horse, you dismount. Now it's time to make you guys regret invading my territory. I offered you guys a very good deal by protecting your entire southern and eastern borders. What do you do? You attack me! So, do you think I'm just going to take this line down? I was originally going to make an alliance with you guys again so that you guys could continue to be my western buffer. But no, that wasn't good enough for you. You had to go and do this. And now that you've made me mad, you're going to pay for it. Excuse me, come through. Now, if you're wondering why my little buddy Zex here is attacking me now when he was an ally before, well, that's actually something that was asked a lot during the war. Yes, I need to make these guys know that attacking me was a mistake. So I'm not going to take a simple victory on this one. I'm salty now. But Zex there is actually in their forces. Your allies, or anyone that you have an alliance with, I should say, will send the reinforcements during battles. Hence why you saw him on my side in other fights. Due to the messy nature of war, you of course would have situations where yesterday's ally is tomorrow's enemy and vice versa. And this game actually does kind of make you live a little bit of that, especially if you play with the alliances a lot. And since I prefer to, because, well, why do the work when you can just hire someone else to do it? It stands to reason. Good, as I hope, the enemy is coming straight to us. And you're seeing already the difference this new weapon is making. 
Na, veď si mal. How did I wind up here? How could I be so careless? That is a fair question. He really just kind of wandered into the enemy's grip. Oh, there you are. I'm outside of you. Okay. You see, there's a few things I'm willing to overlook in life. If someone insults me, you know, it's whatever. Maybe they're having a bad day. But we're two months out of our peace agreement, and the first thing you do is attack me. Not even just the empire that I happen to be a part of. You attack me specifically because I'm the prefect over that land. So, you know, maybe I'm petty, maybe I'm vindictive, maybe I'm all of those things and so much more. I'm just gonna kill you all. <laughs> you know, that's just, that's, that's, that's the way it be, is what I'm saying. The trail is a special kind of sick. So I want to send a message. A defensive battle, I think, is the best way to send a message. Because, in general, you'd kind of be of the opinion that he who attacks has the advantage. Well, if your enemy doesn't just turtle you out, they just make you waste resources. But they actually make a point to spearhead into the heart of your army, pick the crap out of you, and take half your uh, attendants hostage. That sends a message. And I like sending messages. And I feel this is a message we're sending. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute. You've been talking about this entire time betraying somebody. And whether you're joking or not is besides the point. Why does it make you so mad that this is not even, like, truly a betrayal? You know what? Because it's me. I want to be Emperor of China. So, this whole... We're going to invade your front lawn the instant your defenses are down... ...is not going to stand. I'm just not... I'm not going to tolerate it, is what I'm saying. Don't you know what people just like to close you? Yeah, you know, that is something he would say to me in real life, but I think he would say it in a much more sarcastic sense. Hi, ah, keep trying to do the double Muso. Whatever, that more than got the point across. You can stop wandering out from the Yeah, I can just knock down a fully, <laughs> fully assembled wooden structure by shoulder checking it. I Top off before you hit the last run of the mission. Now, because this is a defensive battle, there's not actually going to be a boss fight. Instead, it's just going to be capturing this base, and if we capture this base, the mission is ours. I don't mean to brag or anything, but defensive battles are a little bit of a specialty. I actually tend to do better when the odds are against me. In certain battles, you can have situations where enemy soldiers are so low in number that you'll be sitting there and they'll be like, oh, there's 150 more guys in this base, but only like 10 or 15 spawn in at a time. Honestly, the enemies having bigger numbers is kind of an advantage to you. 
Now, I think that's generally just like a resource thing. Like, they can't overtax the system by just having like way too many guys. And that's it. Alright, Nataku. Hey, Orange. Yeah, everyone did good. Good job, everyone. Ah, a sword. You're with us. You're dead. You're dead. No, you're dead. Marvelous. And I bet my Emperor won't even let me keep him. Oh, you just wait. You're gonna get yours. Oh! Oh dear. <laughs> Looks like my carousing has come home. Well, just cutting straight to the point, then, aren't you? She repeatedly claims and boasts to be a descendant of the God of Fire. Which is not the craziest I've ever dated. So, now I have the option of accepting or not accepting. And, you know, it's a little uncool because Meng Huo is literally in our army, but there's a zero, non-zero percent chance that I'm gonna have to kill him before this is all said and done. So, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? That'll be the theme of this episode, is... Snack finally settles down. With a crazy warrior Amazon lady. Very existence itself to me. <laughs> and lo, it was recorded that Emperor Snack of China died via broken pelvis. Alright, so, since that looks like a big load of not my problem, we can move about uninterrupted. The fatigue system is one of those things I, I myself grow quickly tired of. It's a pain to have to constantly baby it. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead. This is literally the only place we can go to because, like I said before, you can't jump into someone else's battle, much as these jerks totally deserve it. But I'm hoping this will give me the element of surprise. A good number of my guys were pretty tired, and like I predicted, I wasn't allowed to keep the guys I recruited. Actually, no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Designated officer. How do you... I forget how you unlock the group of healing. We'll just arrest this month. Lady killer. Yeah, okay, whatever. Ah, that also looks like not my problem. Yeah, 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 some things don't happen in the you know, six-month time you expect. Yeah, okay. You keep believing that you'll eventually win that fight. Eh, that looks good. It's a good way to get free experience points, but honestly, it's not worth worrying overly much about it. I hate the fatigue system. Like, it does go down over time, but it's easier if you can heal. But this is literally just one person, so... It sucks. Actually, like to push ahead, but I 
because the more I invade, the more falls directly under my prefecture. You know, these guys are jerks. They deserve it. Got the least tired of them first. It just is what it is now. Ah, we have a numbers advantage. Like I said, crushing a defensive battle can be exactly what you need. Interesting. You guys have made the fatal flaw of assuming that I care about you. I'm doing more damage to the guy who's resisting me. Interesting. Oh, he's glowing. He probably has a defense up property. Okay. That big last swipe of that spin combo does a lot of damage, so it's probably a defense up. Oh yeah, we're already got a huge advantage here. No sense in being conservative, then. Move ahead. And really, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. Raids and defensive battles are great ways of evening up the score. Get an area primed and ready for the combat. Now, does that fatigue system continue to accumulate? Yes. Yes, unfortunately, it accumulates, and it can be a lot. It can literally just dash your stats to near nothing if you allow it to. But, again, everyone I recruit keeps getting stolen from me, so I can't even rotate the troops that I'm using. So, you know, I'm not saying right this second, but I'm saying my prefecture is almost large enough to be self-sustaining. I'm just saying that a particular strategic junction is coming. And it's coming sooner than the uh, ruler of these lands might well want to admit. This piece of junk. There we go. But they're already charging into the enemy base. My guys are just really on it. I'm gonna take this defensive area over here, though. First off, there's a named unit inside, and second. Alright. You know, when someone irritates me, it becomes a lot more than just than just getting the point across. Sometimes you need to just really drive it home. You know what I'm saying? We're having one of those situations where a few guys are spawning in at a time. Base captains also count for more than one point. Well, usually, as you defeat a base captain, a new one will spawn in and take his place. Looking for those name tags is a great way of getting through bases as fast and as efficiently as possible. Excuse me, dropping in. I don't remember which of you guys is the prefect for this region, so I'm just going to take you out one by one until I find out which one it is. Ah, there's Peng Yi. Sorry, Ding Zhe, sorry for the uh, anticlimax. Hey, one, doing good, doing good. Liu Yuan, you doing good? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, you're dead. You're all dead. I didn't see a single person in your number that I wanted to take with me. It's gonna be very awkward when I completely surround that lower southwest area. Yeah, about that. Mm, no, don't think so. 
You got it under control, Key. You clearly understand what's needed. You're not an idiot at all. Oh, Miss Malona. You simply leave everything to me. I work harder than anybody. That is true facts. Uh, this is also another one of Ditaku's characters, and is kind of a rival to the character Koala, who we met earlier. And as Ditaku rightfully predicted, Malona offered us a recruitment rate that was less than a half of Koala's. There is nothing about that that is not hilarious to me. Oh no, you lost it. This is for you, I hope it will, it will help you out. Thank you, you just enjoy giving me random gifts, huh? Wow, that's a nice one. Might be worth replacing one of my current spears with that. I won't get the full bonus from it, but, like, it should be close. There is a certain amount of leeway where a certain preference for a particular weapon translates a little bit into other similar weapons. Wow, that's actually not one of them. I thought the Crescent Blade would definitely be it, but guess not. But is it worth it, though? Yeah, actually, it kind of is. Ah, rats. That is the real problem, though. I have a lot of heaven affinity weapons. And my kingdom is tired. Alas, I have so many more fools to put in their place before I sleep. At this point, I'm going to spend a few months trying to get a little bit more help. I think I'm going to cut it here for now, and I'll see you guys in a few months, in-game months, with our next tactical move, which will probably involve taking out that pink spot there on the western coast. I'll see you guys then!